Lua in Ireland. So, hello. I'm Jan Chasul. I came from a tropical paradise called Costa Rica. And today I will talk to you a little bit about an implementation of Lua inside the Ireland virtual machine. So, Lua is an implementation of standard Lua written in Erlang OTP. Lua is a powerful, efficient, as you know, lightweight, embeddable scripting language that is common in games, Internet of Things devices, scientific computing research, and supports, well, almost everything. You can do procedural programming, object-oriented programming with it, functional programming, and, well, almost everything. A little bit about Lua. Uh, Lua was born out of necessity, initially developed as a result of a strict trade barriers instituted by the Brazilian government. Uh, apparently, around that time, you cannot import uh, software, so they, they built this language for their own purpose was created by Roberto Jerusalinsky, Luis Enrique de Figueiredo, and Walter Marcellus at the Pontifical Catholic University of Rio. Lua is portable, is very small, is simple. In portability, you can find Lua inside, inside NetBSD kernel, inside the Olivetti printers, you can find Lua inside your car dashboard if you own a Mercedes or a Volvo. It's basically everywhere. It's simple and have a strong emphasis on scripting. In scripting, Lua is very simple. It only has very few power mechanisms like associative arrays to implement all data structures called tables have a closures which are first class anonymous functions with lexical scope, that's kind of the technicality, and coroutines, one showed continuations, but in the case of Luar, we really don't interact or have closure, uh, coroutines in the implementation because what we use are the capabilities that the Beam Virtual Machine gives us to exploit multiple processes at the same time. It's a scripting language used to control other languages in the sense not of other dynamic languages like Python or Perl, but in the sense of Unix shells. With Lua, you always have like a program that is all, that is all the time written in two different languages. You have the, the system language, which give you like the stable parts of your application, the algorithms and data structure. And you usually use Lua as the scripting language uh, in the flexible and easy parts of your development. Erlang is a concurrent functional language that runs on his own scalable fault tolerance of real-time virtual machine called the BIM. It was created in the 80s by the team <coughs> of Mike Williams, Robert Birding, and Joe Armstrong at the Ericsson Computer Science Lab. It was later released as open source in the ID2 thanks to an uh, effort of a uh, group led by Jane Waldrup. The problem domain that they had in the 80s was telephony. So they have a switch called the AXE, and apparently it was very com cumbersome to develop and maintain, so they have a problem. They need to find a replacement or at least develop some tool or some system with 
all of these capabilities, uh, something that maintains massive concurrency, something that is fault tolerant with timing constraint. Apparently, if you are a telecom company and you sell equipment, uh, you paid a lot of uh, cash, you know, if uh, you broke all this constraint, they are in your contract, so it's a very important issue. You need, to, you need the capability to continue so operating the system, and you can't shut it down at any time. Like, you know, if you take a phone, you expect always to have line. It's not that uh, you have, like, the time frame at 12 o'clock to restart all the country communications. So they have this problem, and Ireland is the result of that problem. It's not an academic implementation of a functional language, and it's not an academic implementation of the actor model. They later discovered the Carl Hewitt's papers and compared, but it's not that they were uh, pursuing that goal. So what is the BIM? Basically, the BIM is a virtual machine that runs Erlang. And that's it. It has some internal properties that you basically don't need to worry about. It gives you this massive concurrency, asynchronous communication, multiple process isolated from each other. You have error handling capabilities. The feature to hot code reload at any time and support introspection and monitoring. You only have to worry about sending and receiving messages. And it also have some external properties, which is what the developers see or interact with. You have immutable data, a strong paddle machine, it's a functional language with a predefined set of data types. You have modules as the uh, unit of encapsulating uh, code and no global data. When you develop Erlang, there is this thing called the OTP, which is basically the framework that you use if you are an Erlang developer to make your things. It's a collection of libraries and tools. It basically gives you uh, the concept of an application and different behaviors like uh, finance state machines, uh, the client and server abstraction. You can own, you have like supervision trees and that sort of things. In this environment, we have what we call the Beam ecosystem, which are different languages that are built to live inside uh, and interact with uh, Erlang and OTP and the being at the lowest level of the infrastructure that again is just a virtual machine to run Erlang. It's very uh, Lua, in, in the other side, is famous for the forgive you mechanisms and not policies. It's a simple language with simple concepts that provide you the mechanisms to implement the rest of the fancy features that you might need instead of provide all of that directly to you. It also have like an ecosystem, uh, like the standard official Lua from Brazil, Lua JIT and Raptor JIT, MoonScript, which is kind of a different language built on top, and Luer, which is the reason that I'm here, and many more implementations. The goal of Luer is give you a proper implementation of the Lua language. So what Robert Building, the creator of Luer, was looking uh, when he created this project, 
was not built a language that is like Lua on the BIM, but is give you the complete native Lua, but for the for this ecosystem. Like the standard Lua, Lua is implemented as a library. The BIM is a mixture of interpreting Lua virtual machine instructions using Erlang directly to implement function calls. One up, up, additional of the features that you might have on common native Lua, it gives you fast language switch between Erlang and Lua. Uh, it exploits the capabilities of the, virtu the BIM virtual machine, give you a transparent give you the way to transparently utilize your multi-core machines. Uh, so Luerl is a complete re-implementation of the Lua language, including an Erlang API that match the C API available on the standard Lua. Some trade-off of both languages. Lua is commonly not good for concurrency on and multi-core parallelisms. The standard library is not very large and give you a do-it-yourself approach to life, which is not a very bad thing. It's just the way it works. Lua is not good. Erlang is not good for heavy number crunching, global chair mutable state or your common desktop Wii application or mobile. The result of this implementation gives you a complete Lua with great, that offers great interaction not only between Erlang, but Elixir, LFE, and all the rest of our friends on this ecosystem. Uh, in the implementation or using Luer, we keep our Lua state in one data structure is, and we explicitly thread it through everything. This threading of stuff is what we typically do in Erlang anyway. With that in mind, it's similar of what Roberto Jerusalemski called the eye of the needle approach, which is using all these mechanisms that Lua gives you to try it in your head to see how you need to, to, to use them to, like with the eye of the needle example, pass all your data structures and your code around that, the API. Lua embrace both Lua LAN and Erlang communities, and I guess my goal of this presentation is at least spark your curiosity to check it out to learn more about Erlang, to use more Lua inside that ecosystem. I personally believe that both communities are very simple, diverse, and complementary, and great languages. That's my presentation, so thank you. And if you're interested, question? No? All right. Yes? Uh, do you have some uh, example code? Not with me, but I can show you outside in the, not right here in the presentation, but for sure. Lua has a dynamically tagged language, right? It is. It is. How does it fit with the B? Because, you know, the airline is very statically tagged. It is. So Robert builds his own uh, Lua virtual machine in top of the beam. So you uh, interpret code and isn't interpreted exactly. There is an interpreter and a virtual machine implementation. So, yes. Which version of Lua is now? Uh, right now is uh, uh, dot. Right now we are currently working on the. 
uh, 5.3 implementation, and I think there is a ready for for prime time, but we need uh, users and we need all the help that we can get with the bug reporting. So, welcome to you are welcome to check it out. Um, that's that's it. Thank you.